The 2003 film Open Water was inspired by the real-life story surrounding the disappearance of Tom and Eileen Lonergan on January 25, 1998. Abandoned by their tour boat while diving in Australia's Great Barrier Reef, the couple was missing for two days before anyone even realized they were gone. A rescue mission was eventually mounted, but their bodies were never found. The critically beloved film made from their story theorized the couple fell victim to sharks, but the truth is, no one really knows how Tom and Eileen met their fate. Today, we're going to take a look at the terrifying true story that inspired the movie Open Water. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what mysterious stories you would like to hear about. Okay, let's dive in. A dive slate is a small board often carried by divers on which they can write messages. Dive slates make underwater communication much more effective and give the diver a place to record information. About six months after the Lonergans disappeared, a hundred miles north of their last known position, a fisherman pulled a water-worn dive slate from the sea. It read, Monday, January 26, 1998, 8 a.m. To anyone who can help us, we have been abandoned on Agincourt Reef by MV Outer Edge, 25th of January, 1998, 3 p.m. Please help to rescue us before we die. Help. The message proves that Tom and Eileen didn't stay behind by choice and that the couple survived at least into the following afternoon. After their disappearance, Tom and Eileen's diaries were located and read. They provided plenty of insight into the state of the couple's marriage, which, apparently, was in a particularly dark place. Turns out, both of the Lonergans were unhappy in their marriage and with their lives. Both of them also hated their respective teaching careers. According to Eileen's diary, she believed she was becoming too intertwined with her husband, who she suspected was developing a death wish. Sections of Tom's diary seemed to validate those suspicions. For example, in one passage he wrote, I feel like a student who has finished an exam. I feel that my life is complete and I am ready to die. There are those who believe that the diary suggests the Lonergans died enacting some sort of suicide pact, or alternatively, that Eileen died in a murder-suicide at the hands of her husband. However, most investigators have concluded that the couple died in an unfortunate accident, and the personal stuff in the diaries is just coincidental. The movie Open Water speculates that Tom and Eileen were eaten by sharks. While plausible at first, experts have pointed out most sharks that live in the waters around Australia are harmless to humans. Moreover, the couple's wetsuits and dive jackets, which later washed ashore, showed no blood residue, teeth marks, or anything else that indicated a shark attack. Despite this, at least one veteran diver still believes they were eaten by sharks. That would be Ben Kropp, who thinks that the likely culprits were tiger sharks. He theorizes these notoriously dangerous sharks would have watched and waited for hours before trying to attack. Because of the tiger sharks, Krop believes Tom and Eileen couldn't have lasted more than 48 hours. During the investigation, police encountered the captain of another boat who claimed to have visited the same dive spot the day after the Lonergans disappeared. According to his story, the head count at the end of the trip, when the boat was returning, came out with two more people than the one at the beginning of the day when the boat headed out. He also remembered hearing a few American voices, even though the tourists on the expedition were all from Italy and only spoke Italian. If true, this would mean that the Lonergans spent the night in the ocean, slipped in amongst the Italian tourists during the next day's dive, boarded the second boat without being noticed at the time, and then disappeared forever after reaching the shore. While this scenario can't be eliminated as impossible, most investigators haven't found it particularly plausible either. A few weeks after the Lonergans disappeared, inflatable diving jackets and air tanks washed up on a beach about 75 miles north of the dive site. The items had Tom and Eileen's names written on them. An examination of the tanks showed some air left inside, indicating they were likely jettisoned when the couple realized the ship wouldn't be returning for them. Eight years later, a fin with the couple's last name written on it was discovered in the surf. Why the Lonergans removed their jackets, which would have helped keep them afloat, remains a mystery. In the absence of any evidence of a shark attack, investigators have theorized the couple may have become delirious from dehydration or might have removed the jackets in an attempt to swim to shore 
Regardless of which is correct, the Lonergans would almost certainly have worn themselves out trying to tread water without the jackets. The air tanks and diving jackets weren't the only items found. Several months after the Lonergans vanished, a woman's wetsuit of the same size Eileen wore washed up on shore. It was found intact, with no damage that was consistent with a shark attack and no traces of blood anywhere on it. While some minor tears were present in the armpit and the bottom area, they were believed to be caused by the suit getting snagged on coral as it made its way through the ocean. Barnacles were attached to the zipper, and forensic scientists were able to use their rate of growth to determine that the suit had been in the ocean since approximately the end of January, or right around the time Tom and Eileen disappeared. While there isn't any concrete evidence to suggest such a thing, many have speculated that Tom and Eileen faked their deaths. Why? Well, more than 20 eyewitnesses from all over the continent came forward to say they saw the couple after the date of their alleged demise. Those who hold this point of view tend to believe that the Lonergans were picked up a mile away from the dive site by an unidentified boat. If they did fake their deaths, the Lonergans would really have had to start from scratch. Their bank accounts remained untouched, their passports were left behind, and their insurance policies were never cashed in. However, such a scenario seems unlikely, given that their plan would have required the ship's crew to somehow miscount the number of passengers aboard. Shortly after the Outer Edge returned to shore, one of the crew members found the Lonergan's bag left unattended. Thinking it was merely forgotten luggage, they handed it to the lost and found. Meanwhile, the hostel Tom and Eileen had been staying at had sent a shuttle to bring them back. When they didn't show up, the driver spent a short time searching for them in shops and restaurants and then checked in with the Outer Edge. At this point, it was discovered that the Lonergans had left their shoes at the dive shop. Furthermore, it was assumed that the couple had forgotten their shoes and managed to make it back to the hostel without the shuttle. It was two days later when the owner of the Outer Edge noticed the Lonergan's bag was still in the lost and found. He opened it up and found Tom's wallet. This prompted him to call the police. More than 48 hours after they had gone missing, a search was finally begun. Immediately, it was discovered that two dive jackets and weights were missing. Though it took 48 hours to get a search started, the Outer Edge had actually returned to the exact same dive spot with a different group of divers only 24 hours after Tom and Eileen disappeared. One of the divers from this group discovered two weight belts on the seafloor. The belts, which divers use as a countermeasure against the buoyant equipment they carry, were right near where Tom and Eileen were last seen. This was reported, but it was before anyone knew the couple was missing, so no one tied the two events together. The ship's crew simply considered the belts a lucky find and carried on with the day's expedition. Though it can't be known for sure, it's possible that these belts were the ones Tom and Eileen had been using. They likely would have dropped them once they realized the ship wasn't returning. It was Eileen Lonergan that first started scuba diving. She picked up the hobby when the couple lived in Louisiana, and she convinced her husband to give it a shot as well. On what would be their final trip, they had been returning from a Peace Corps mission in Fiji when they decided they couldn't miss the chance to dive at Australia's Great Barrier Reef. To that end, they boarded the Outer Edge, which took 24 divers to three different sites about 40 miles offshore. The third dive was at a place known as Fish City on account of the abundant sea life. Being experienced divers, Tom and Eileen allegedly told the crew they wanted to go off on their own for this final dive. This request was apparently never recorded in the dive log by any of the ship's crew. Taking head counts at the beginning and end of a diving expedition is standard practice, which raises the question, how was Tom and Eileen's absence overlooked? The ship's skipper claims to have ordered such a count on that day. However, in the middle of the count, things got confused when two people jumped back into the water. With the countdown too, these people were assumed to be the last divers and all appeared to be accounted for. It's also believed that the crew may have been generally inexperienced. On the day the Lonergans disappeared, the water was clear, calm, and warm. This has led some to wonder why the couple didn't swim to a large buoy that was nearby, or one of the well-lit diving platforms that was only a few miles away. However, experts say that while these things would be easily visible from the deck of a boat, things would look very different from the surface of the water. Making things worse, Tom had left his glasses on the boat and his vision wasn't great without them. As for the diving platforms, they were likely up current, which would have made them very difficult to swim to. 
It's also highly likely that the couple was in a state of panic. And who wouldn't be? They had been abandoned in the ocean and there was no rescue mission underway. Combined with the sun's heat and lack of drinking water, the Lonergans were probably disoriented and terrified. In 1999, the owner of Outer Edge, Jack Nairn, was charged with the manslaughter of Tom and Eileen Lonergan. At trial, the defense used the couple's diaries to convince the jury that the two might have faked their own deaths. Nairn was acquitted. As the trial centered on Nairn personally, rather than the entire company, it's possible that the jury didn't believe the deaths were solely his fault. Nairn was later tried in civil court. This time, he pled guilty to negligence and was eventually fined for breaking safety rules. While he may have escaped criminal liability, Nairn didn't get off scot-free. The court costs and fines, coupled with the negative publicity to his business, forced him to close Outer Edge. As a result of the incident, Queensland would later enact stricter rules governing how dive companies take headcounts. How do you think you would have survived being abandoned at sea? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.